Welcome to worship this morning at First Unitarian Church of Orlando. I'm Joan Nelson, a member of your Board of Trustees. If this is the first time you're joining us or for those of you returning, we welcome you to our community of love, support, justice, compassion, fellowship, and worship. We are so glad you are with us today. For more information about our congregation, you can find it at our website, www.orlandouu.org. And if you have additional questions, please feel free to email us at welcometeam at orlandouu.org. Today, after our worship service, we will have two online options. The first, our fellowship, where we gather um, and chat for about 20 minutes in breakout sessions. And this week, coming up weekly, will be our Welcome Center for those who are new to our congregation or new to our faith tradition. We want you to join us so you can find out more. Both of these will be at 1130 this morning. Each will have a separate Zoom link, which will be shown on your screen at the end of our worship service. Please know that we are an active and vibrant church, and if you would like to make an offering in support of our many ministries, you can do so. There's several ways. One, you can go to our website again, orlandouu.org, click on the Donate button that you'll find in the top right-hand corner, or you can send us a text at the number you can find in the notes or comments section on your screen, or you can mail us a check, and you can find our address again on our website. Now today's worship service has a special theme. It's in preparation for our National General Assembly, affectionately known as GA, and it will be coming to us virtually this year in just a few weeks. You're going to hear from two of our congregation's returning delegates about what GA means to them and about this year's themes. And our transition minister, Reverend Sam Shaw, will be returning to the pulpit next week. It is always wonderful to be together and to gather in worship and in song. Aubrey? From the line of days remembered burns a beacon bright and clear, guiding hands and hearts and spirits into faith set free from fear. When the fire of commitment sets our mind and soul ablaze, when our hunger and our passion reach to call us on our way, when we live with deep assurance of the flame that burns within, then our promise finds fulfillment and our future can be
In our Unitarian Universalist tradition, we set aside this time as sacred time, apart from the clatter of the world. And we say our familiar words, in the light of truth and in the warmth of love, we gather to seek, to sustain, and to share. Good morning. I'm Sarah Gray, religious educator here at First Unitarian. So I wanna ask you a question. Have you ever heard anyone talk about roots before? I'm not talking about the roots of a plant, although they are pretty similar in some ways. I'm talking about roots as in where you are from, your roots. You can be from a family, you can be from a certain place or a country, or you can be from a certain community or religion. And where we are from, our roots, help shape who we are. Today, we're going to be reading a story together that talks all about these different places or even ideas about where our roots are, where we can be from. Where Are You From? by Shamile Syed Mendez, illustrated by Jamie Kim. Where are you from, they ask. Is your mom from here? Is your dad from there, they ask. I'm from here, from today, same as everyone else, I say. No, where are you really from, they insist. I ask Abuelo, because he knows everything. And like me, he looks like he doesn't belong. Where am I from? Abuelo thinks. His eyes squint like he's looking inside his heart for an answer. You come from the Pampas, the open, free land, he says. You're from the Gaucho, brave and strong, from the brown river that cleanses and feeds the land that gives us the grain for our bread, the milk from the cows. You're from the mountains so high they tickle Signor Cielo's belly, where the condor roosts his family and the jaguar prowls the night. But you're also from the warm blue oceans the copper warriors tried to tame, and the elegant palm trees stretch their fingers to caress. You are from hurricanes and dark storms, and a tiny singing frog that calls the island people home when the sun goes to sleep. From this land where our ancestors built a home for all, even when they were in chains because of the color of their skin. You're from the grandmothers who search for their grandchildren, waiting, always waiting in a plaza, their white handkerchiefs wrapping the sorrow of their thoughts. You come from the sunshine that lights our path in this world and the rain that washes away our mistakes. But Abuelo, I ask, where am I really from? Abuelo laughs. You want a place? He points to his heart. You're from here, for my love and the love of all those before us. From those who dreamed of you because of a song sung under the Southern Cross, or the words in a book written under the light of the North Star. You you are from all of us. I am. Thank you, Sarah. And now we turn to our joys and concerns. We are hopeful in our nation that peaceful protests continue to bear witness to the structures of racism in our nation. And we hold the family of George Floyd in our hearts. 
His funeral service was held just this last Tuesday in Houston. We're grateful for the work of so many here in Orlando and around the nation, working to end white supremacist structures and work towards a society that will work for all. We remember all of those who are afflicted by COVID-19 and we affirm hope and resilience as we move forward together. In our congregation, we have a joy. Greg and Beverly Alec are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary today. So as we consider the unspoken sorrows of our lives, let us open our hearts to song. Aubrey. Far beyond the grasp of hands, or light to meet the eye, as the reaches of the mind, they find the key to nature's harmony in an architect so entwined. Like the birds whose patterns grace the sky and carry all who joy. Expanding the message of peace will rise in flight, taking the weight of the world upon its wings in the oneness of everything. Peace is in the dance of trees who stir before the first breath of wind is yet perceived. Trust in the song becoming one with the dance and all mysteries can be believed. Songs of lives long past a touch our own are written in the earth ever giving and now to maintain the harmony gives to us all lives with living for the oneness of heaven find the truth that we might understand and reduce to terms defined vast and immeasurable time and space also overwhelmingly designed oh passing years just might I know the faith that winters in the heart to be reborn in spring, to hear and to feel the pulse of life enters my soul as a song to sing of the oneness of everything. To remember, honor, or pray for others, you're invited to name them during the silence in our communion of names. You can use either the Facebook comment section or the Zoom chat box. With Zoom, please make sure your chat goes to all participants, not just to the panelists. The panelists are our worship team today. With open hearts, we hear this meditation from Richard Blanco, the fifth U.S. presidential inaugural poet and last year's Ware Lecturer at General Assembly in Spokane. We will follow the reading of an excerpt from his poem, Matters of the Sea, with a silent meditation. The sea doesn't matter. What matters is this. 
We all belong to the sea between us, all of us. Once and still, the same child who marvels over starfish, listens to hollow shells, sculpts dreams into impossible castles. We've all been lovers, holding hands and strolling either of our shores. Our footprints, like a mirage of selves, vanished in waves that don't know their birth or care from which country they break. They break, bless us, return to the sea, home to our silent wishes. No matter what anthem we sing, we've all walked barefoot and bare-souled among the soar and dive of seagull cries. We've offered our sorrows and hopes up to the sea, our lips anointed by the same spray of salt-laden wind. We've fingered our memories and regrets like stones in our hands that we can't toss. Yet we've all cupped seashells to our ears. Listen again to the echo, the sea still telling us the end to our doubts and fears is to gaze into the lucid blues of our shared horizon. Breathe together. Heal together. And now with the silent meditations of our hearts, we enter the time of quiet and the communion of names. Thank you so much, Aubrey. Good morning. I am Cindy Schleyer, long-term Unitarian Universalist 
and a member of First Unitarian Church of Orlando. I am speaking today on Rooted, Inspired, and Ready, the theme for the General Assembly of the Unitarian Universalist Association, which will be held June 24th to the 28th in virtual format. So who and what has been a part of my history or your history or Unitarian history? I believe it's important to understand so we can better know ourselves, the world, our country. We need to understand our roots. My genetic history based on Ancestry.com is Northern European. And then when they came to the United States, Virginia, Mississippi, Arkansas, and Texas, a lot of movement and travel in my family and my birth family. I lived in Japan, Washington, D.C., Colorado, Maryland, lots of places. My background has included connections to teaching, to church, to the military, and predominantly city life. So is that similar to yours? Roots or not, I feel connected and grounded with certain groups. I recognize that I have areas where I lack roots and I work to understand how my roots hinder understanding. First Unitarian Church and the Unitarian faith is rooted in deep and universal values, which keep me connected in an even more important way. In times of change and challenges, I look to my faith to find support. It challenges me to be better, act on these deeply rooted values. Over eight years ago, I attended the Unitarian Assembly in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Wonderful restaurants, camaraderie, singing. Some of us roomed together and stayed up late into the night talking and laughing and discussing all the things we had learned or had been brought forth. Last year and this year, I will be attending while sitting on my computer in Orlando. I will spend the time digging deeper into my Unitarian roots while sipping coffee and keeping my cat off my keyboard. As a virtual delegate to Unitarian General Assembly, I will be able to enjoy, and last year virtually I enjoyed, the choirs, listened to debates and discussions, participated in chat rooms, and also was moved by the lectures, the discussions, the ideas. It was inspiring, and that is a big part of why to go and why to participate. Inspiration for me comes from gathering with other people who have the same goals and supports me and challenges me and celebrates progress while maintaining a very clear vision. This can be done without being in a huge physical convention center or navigating the endless rooms and hallways and booths. The experience of a convention of people conversing and working together to build a better world inspires me. I am not alone. As I attend Black Lives Matter protests, it is not only the speakers, but it is knowing I am in a community of other marchers, whether it be in person or on my media feeds, demanding the same thing. That is inspiration, and it is a bit of a general assembly. We are ready, I am ready to move forward knowing there's always going to be more to explore, more to learn, more to organize. Ready for me is a culmination of lots of, the, of what we've talked about before. It's kind of like getting ready for like a 10K race, walk, or wheel. The rooted part is examining yourself, your own mental and physical strengths and weaknesses, checking your habits. Are they helpful or not? Your resources. Do you have what you need? Do you need to gather more? You have to be honest about yourself and what is required. 
the inspiration comes from the vision, the supporters, the progress you can make. So now we're ready. It's not about winning a race. It's about being in the race, willing to take on the challenges, the discomfort, the struggle. The Unitarian Universalists have been a people of deed and not creed. We hold fast to our values, acknowledge the ups and downs of our roots, inspire each other to do better and to keep doing the work that is needed in this world. It seems to be a daunting task and we also need to take care of ourselves. I am not saying General Assembly can do it all. It can keep us connected to each other and we can also have some fun. Some of the events I saw online, anti-racism as a spiritual practice. The Stonewall Generation, Sex, Activism, and Aging. Musical offerings. One was Deeper Than the Skin, a musical presentation on race. So try to go to the General Assembly virtually to get rooted, to be inspired, and be ready to build a better world. Good morning. I'm Marianne Horn, and I've been honored to represent 1U at three past Unitarian Universalist Association General Assemblies. Each was different, and each deepened my faith. I'm also a delegate at this year's General Assembly with the theme, Rooted, Inspired, and Ready. I think my past experiences give me real appreciation for that theme. My first GA was in 2017 in New Orleans. At that time, our denomination was agonizing over some troubling questions around race, transparency, and inclusion. The top two elected leaders in the UUA had resigned for different reasons, and we were being led by three interim co-presidents. When we reached New Orleans, the city known for its charm and spirit of celebration, as well as for its strife and division, we knew we had to reach down to the roots of our faith. As the saying goes, if your roots are deep enough, you won't need to fear the wind. At my first GA, I saw UUs struggle mightily to confront our shortcomings and our biases. I learned more about our past and listened to stories from New Orleans about Hurricane Katrina and the struggle there to rescue a whole generation traumatized by that hurricane. That year's Ware lecturer, Brian Stevenson, issued an urgent plea to remedy racial injustice. We elected a new president, the Reverend Susan Frederick Gray, and we left the Crescent City hopeful. The next year, I was excited about General Assembly in Kansas City, where I had lived some decades ago. My daughter, Cami, represented 1U as a youth delegate, and we were inspired. Kansas City had been rocked just before our arrival by a series of shootings involving police and communities of color. The Unitarian Universalist Ministers Association issued a statement saying we are inspired by the courage of this community and we are honored to stand with them. As we moved through the assembly, our spirits were lifted even higher. Reverend Susan Frederick Gray told us that 2018 was not a time for casual faith. Our Ware lecturer, Brittany Packnett, brought an electrifying message of love plus power to an assembly that was themed, All Are Called. Our delegates met condemnation from the Westboro Baptist picketers with love and song and rainbows. Discussions focused on the work ahead in the Black Lives Matter and immigration movements. We left the city of Fountains hopeful. Last year in Spokane, our theme was the power of we. Delegates marched with local activists to call out the unfair systems of mass incarceration and cash bail. We trimmed the time that we spend in general business sessions so that we could ponder questions put before us by the UUA board, including what will it take for Unitarian Universalists to fully embody the power of we. It felt ready. We were prepared and we were willing to make our faith and our values known and to bring about real change. Also last year, I got to see Cami as a member of the General Assembly Youth Staff, working with a team of young Unitarian Universalists from across the country. They let us know that they too were ready to have more of a voice in the denomination. We left the Lilac City hopeful. 
Which brings us to 2020. The gathering of our faith will look nothing like it has before. Our leaders had to adapt with changing circumstances, but they still promise an assembly that will call us to our roots, inspire us, and make us ready for the work ahead. And there is work ahead. I will miss the stirring live music and worship crowded into our assembly space with hundreds of other UUs. I will miss sitting with people from other congregations in discussions and marching with them in social action. But our online assembly still will offer worship. We will have workshops and a featured speaker series from Beacon Press. Our wear lecturer, Naomi Klein, will remind us of our planet's climate crisis and the need for social action to rescue our planet before it is too late. We will even have coffee hour. And I will get to see Cami participate in Friday night's virtual synergy bridging service. That's where Unitarian Universalist teens graduate into young adulthood. You can all see that too, by the way, since that particular live stream is available to the public, even if you aren't registered for General Assembly. But right now, if I may offer a reason that you should consider joining the online General Assembly, I can reach back to the start of my own GA experience. In 2017, the three co-presidents reached out before the New Orleans gathering and described our mission in a way that I think resonates even more today. They said, we are called to be present to both our past and to our dreams of the future in this faith community of memory and hope. and this year's themes from Cindy and Marianne, you probably want to learn even more and hopefully consider virtually attending. The slide you see in front of you has information on the dates and the website where you can find out more and you can see how to register. So we turn now to extinguish the chalice. And with these familiar words, we extinguish the flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. We have two additional announcements that were not mentioned at the opening of the service. One is that there is going to be a third online option today at 1130. Wrestling with our understanding of race and racism will meet today at 1130 via Zoom. And you can find those links in the weekend update or on Facebook. And a second announcement is a call out for some volunteers to help move items from the sanctuary next Saturday at 10. 
it will be One U's very first socially distant move-in party. So for more information, please contact Suzanne Oberholzer. And with that, in the words of Reverend Sam, remember, we haven't just been to church, we are the church. Amen, and have a wonderful day. Speak.